I studied to be an actor and a dancer. Really. <laughs> really. And after that, I didn't become either. I became a musician and a record producer. I played around the world as a musician and a record producer. Um, that was great fun. And then after that, I became a lecturer in music. I taught music at Liverpool Institute for Performing Arts. I then worked for the government. I then became music project manager for Africa, the Middle East and South Asia for the British Council, which was a lot of fun. I then became the director of performing arts at the Institute of Contemporary Arts. You're starting to get a pat now, yeah? The pat is no pat, right? Yeah. Yeah, this is what happens if you're an entrepreneur. This is what happens with real life, yeah? yeah? By the way, I'm very old. <laughs> That's how I've done all these things. I'll be 50 in three years' time. <laughs> so, I then created my own company. I created eight companies of my own. Well, my, my, I created the world's first ringtones website that sells ringtones that sound like telephones. It was called soundslikeaphone.com. It sold ringtones that sound like telephones. You go, ring, 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 ring. That's why you've got one in your phone, sir. Yeah? I started a company that sells yoga products. I started all different things because business is generic. Yeah? yeah? yeah. Business is generic. Yeah. The skills you need to start a company opening a shop are the same skills you need to start a company opening a website or an app. Yeah? Don't forget that. I then became an independent consultant where I took all my smart alec knowledge that I got and I sold it to people. Yeah? I did that. I did that for an awful lot of people from like Nike, the Nike Foundation, the BBC, Sony, the Royal Academy of Arts, the British Council, etc. etc. Many people, the Goethe Institute. I then became an independent consultant and event producer. I thought it would be a good idea to produce events as well, which believe me is not a good idea. <laughs> events don't make any money, they're very, very hard, and there's probably someone who wants to do them more than you do. Yeah? They're very difficult. Yeah? And then I went pop. I went pop because I didn't stop. I worked and worked and worked until I thought, I want to take some time off. So, this is New Zealand. I travelled around the world with my wife and daughter for nine months. We backpacked. Yeah? This is my daughter, Amelia Bell, missing her. She liked face painting. She liked face painting a lot. She did lots of face painting with me. She got better at face painting as the holiday went on. This is me as a tiger. This is me as... Anyone know what that is? It's the Brazilian flag, of course. This is me as the Incredible Hulk. Yeah? Yeah? Really, that's real life. Business is fun, business is interesting, but it's not real life. Never forget, and confuse the two. Yeah? A business is just an entity. You can start it, you stop it. Yeah? When you stop it, you bank the learning in your back pocket. Yeah? And then you move on. Yeah? Yeah? Okay. So, why do I do this? What is my purpose in life? Answer the question. When somebody says, how do you do? It's very English. How do you do? You say, no, no, that's the wrong question. You should not be interested in how do you do. You should be interested in why do you do? Why do you do? You should say to somebody, why do you do? Not how do you do. Find the answer to the question, what is your purpose in life? Mine is this. I aim to change the world around me with my gifts of intelligence, empathy, curiosity, and passion. Exploring culture in its fullest sense and unleashing the power of creativity that longs to burst from all of us. That's what I'm for. So if somebody says, why do you do? That is the answer. Okay? Let's get back to the opportunity here. The one that I think is one of the greatest opportunities in the world at the moment. The mobile opportunity. Yeah? I'm interested in culture. What is culture? Culture is how we behave. What we do. And what do we do? One, two, three.
three. I can only see three, that's very little, but normally I can see more. The things that we do is we fiddle with our mobile phones. Yeah. Fiddling with your mobile phone is interesting. It says, I want to be anywhere in the world except for here. <laughs> but anyway, we do it and it's addictive. Yeah. And as any drug pusher knows, an addiction is a great business opportunity. <laughs> yeah? So, in mobile, we have a massive opportunity. Phones are disruptive. Phones are disruptive. Check this point out. Some have worried that the telephone permits inappropriate or dangerous discussions, such as illicit wooing. This was a man called Carl Fisher. Of course, he was talking about landlines in 1880. Yeah? This isn't a new quote, it's not about mobile telephones, it's about the first ever telephones. Yeah? Phones have always been disruptive. Get over it. Yeah? Phones are disruptive. Phones have always been disruptive. That's what they do. They disrupt the way things go. But disruption, as a business opportunity, is extremely exciting. It's disruptive, but it's in a good way. I think that mobile phones are arguably the most positively disruptive technology we have ever seen. And for the remainder of this talk, and I will try not to take too long, because you might want to ask me questions, I'll give you some reasons why I think this, okay? Some reasons why I think it's positively disruptive, where the opportunities lie as well, and where the opportunities particularly lie for you as African business people, African entrepreneurs, and African creatives, okay? By the way, my relationship with Africa goes back to 1994, when I went to South Africa after Nelson Mandela, I hope he's gonna be okay this week, um, uh, when he was elected in South Africa. I've worked in 16 countries in South, South Saharan Africa. It's, um, yeah, I've learned